Yo, 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 everybody, what's up? This is Spit Your Game TV, hosted by Polly Paul. I'm your guest host, L Visionary L. You can follow me on IG and on SoundCloud. I'm today's guest. Make sure you follow me at CashNay on Twitter and on uh what is it apple music what else uh we got everything baby spotify check us out nigga make sure you do all right so yo cash me yo how are you i'm all right i'm all right yo so i see you got this um oh yeah make sure we get it out for this yep show everybody get it out for the people cash me lottery Lottery dreams dreams, baby we out here we got all lottery dreams Oh, oh he was playing this for us earlier and i fucked with it heavy um, his energy, he really delivered strong in this. So, yo, if you if you wanna um, listen to more of his music, follow him on, like he said, Apple Music, Apple music. Spotify, C A dollar sign H N A T E. Make sure you check us out. We hot as fuck. Yep. They're not messing with us. I mean, I, I, there's nothing else <laughs> to say really. Like, let's get on with the interview. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what inspires you as an artist? Well, I'm not gonna lie. I first started rapping in a basement in the project in Springfield with my cousin. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna lie, to this day, Mac Way's my inspiration. As long as he keep rapping, I'm gonna keep rapping. I'm gonna keep being hot. Wow. I gotta be hot. So how did you get into music? He put me in front of a microphone. Mm-hmm. He just said, yo, cuz, you wanna make a song? Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know how to rap. I sing. He was mm-hmm. like, nah, nah, you can't sing on this mic. You gotta rap. Mm-hmm. I was okay. like, all right, I'm gonna rap. So you're you were more into singing. First I was, yeah, like, I did. I mean, when I was growing up, and I did band and I did chorus. I did magicals. I did show mm-hmm. choir. I mean, music lives in me. Yep, yep. I mean, so who um who's your favorite artist? Like? My favorite artist personally is Jay Z. I know there's gonna be a lot of people who not become a fan of me because I like Jay Z. I like the truth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who like the auto tune turn up music. It's good too. When I'm drunk, I feel the same shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel yeah. the same way. But yeah. it's just not my per se. You know what I mean? I don't make that music. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's just not my persuasion. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, so, I like to I like to spit. I'm a spitter. I grew up listening to the spitter, so that's what I do. I'm a spitter. So if you would put yourself in like a a category, you know, like in a, a genre. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think that genre would be? Because like now, like you said, like you got mm-hmm. so much like trap artists and like yeah. all of this stuff. It's like, well, the- I put myself in the hip hop category definitely because I'm hip hop to the chorus. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I grew up freestyling with my cousin. I grew up just freestyling songs with just my little sister in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. We was crying. And shit like that. We were freestyle mm-hmm. songs, so mm-hmm. I would definitely say hip hop. Hip hop, I feel it in my bones. But I'm definitely new wave because I'm not gonna give yeah. you a whole bunch of bullshit like gun talk and shit like. That. Like mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I definitely go back to my roots. This is where I come from. I mean, mm-hmm. I used to have it under my mattress. I mean, that's just the way people live. You know, what I mean, I used mm-hmm. to hold things down for people. It's just where we come from. Mm-hmm. We come from. You're not safe without one. You know what I mean? So it's mm-hmm. gonna be a part of my music. But aside from that, I just like to have fun. I like to get drunk. I like to. Smoke weed every day. Smoke weed, Smoke weed every, every day. day. Hey, we got to do it on time. We got to make sure we get it on, on point before we go. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's just who I am. I mean. Oh, yeah. So what inspired this mixtape? My promoter, Casey. Casey Rodriguez. Make sure you guys follow him um, on Instagram. I'm on Instagram, too. I didn't mention that. But make sure you follow me on Instagram, at Cash Nate. Um, or not mm-hmm. Cash Nate, but Cash Nate on Instagram and shit. But make sure you follow Casey Rodriguez. The man is... Just digitally shaking his ass for your boy. You got to make sure you check him out. Mm-hmm. He's definitely one of the best in the game. You fuck with me, he'll fuck with you. He'll get you on too. So, and just, you know what I mean? And he just told me to hit the studio. Like, I spit, uh, what track is it? Hold on. Let me, I spit number five for him. Mm-hmm. I wrote number five like a year ago. I mean, I've been hot for a long time. Since she just wanted to make sure you check it out on YouTube. She just wanted. That shit is hot. Eight White Ape shot the video. You know? But, um... Mm-hmm. I wrote I wrote Reap My Soul like a year, year and a half ago. I can't, you know, really put a finger on the timeline. Mm-hmm. But he was like, Dog, you, you still haven't recorded that song? And I was like, Nah, I didn't record the song yet. And then I had did um hold it down too. I had wrote the ever around, around the same time. Mm-hmm. And he was like, Dog, you ain't record those songs yet? I'm like, nah, man, I don't even I think I, I like the job. I had just got a job at ARS. I'm mm-hmm. um right now. My, my my main job is uh I, I do water restoration. I stop mold and shit. You know, people come to your house and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Daily grind. You know what I mean? You gotta provide. Mm-hmm. But um, he had like he had heard the songs and I had start. You know, I got the job and he, I started mm-hmm. getting a lot more money. So he was like, dog, you got at the studio. You a tech now. 
And so after I recorded uh, actually the first track, I didn't even record the songs he wanted. Mm-hmm. I recorded the first track and I recorded Kitchen. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, dog, yo, you're, you're fucking nice. You're fucking... And I'm like, I know, I know. I've been doing it for a while. Yeah. But um, my second mixtape, I had dropped the first one and I had dropped the second mixtape. And then on my second mixtape, like, I had just lost my car, and there was no way for me to get my covers right, because mm-hmm. the person who had formatted them didn't do them, and, like, I had um, quit my job, because I thought I was, like, ready to take over the game and shit, and everything just, like, fell to pieces uh. and shit. It sucks, you know what I mean, but, you know, you America, um, America loves a great comeback story, and I'm just a yeah. comeback kid, you know what I mean, I'm gonna kick this shit like karate the whole time. Mm-hmm. It just All is right. what it is, you feel me? I fuck with that, I fuck with that. Um, so where do you see yourself as an artist? At the top. <laughs> the fuck? Yep. The fuck? That was a stupid ass question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. The top. We're not gonna say like be. in like ten years or like. In ten know. years, come on, man. Like, That's what are your goals? Silly. My goal is to make sure my kids, kids, kids is riding in a Bentley. Mm-hmm. Come on, now I got. I'm gonna have grandchildren. I know I'm gonna have grandchildren. I got kids now. I know they're gonna get their fuck on. Come on, bro. I'm human. I know, I just, what it is, is human beings. Your parents probably thought the best of you. You got into a dark room and you got it the fuck on. Mm-hmm. So I know my kids are going to have kids. And it's just, while I have the ability, the talent, the youth, the mindset, the support from my peers, I might as well make sure my kids is, kids is, kids is, kids is, kids is, kids is straight. Mm-hmm. Might as well. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you sit around, smoke weed, and drink liquor all day? What you celebrate? Mm-hmm. What you celebrate? Now, don't get fucked up. I was cooking and drinking today, but I was cooking for my family. I was relaxed. I was chilling. I knew I had an interview coming and everything. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people who just sit at home on the couch all day Mm -hmm. and just smoke weed and be like, damn, I got to get this money. They sitting at home hustling. And when Mm -hmm. you do the numbers correctly, if you're just a regular crack dealer, you make as much with more risk as somebody who just brings home $400 home a week. What you got? A nice pair of J's. You riding around in the rental. You know what I mean? Like, come on, B. You're wasting your money and your time. You're not looking mm-hmm. forward. Like, that's what I was trying to do, basically, with my my second mixtape, was really mm-hmm. build the basis, but it fell apart. But I'm happy that it did fall apart because now I have a whole new collection of music that people can get familiar with for the first time. And they can mm-hmm. go back to my old ways and then see how I developed yeah, into this progress. person I am now and then see where I'm about to fucking go. Yeah, because yeah. I'm about to just go so far. Like, I can't even see where I'm about to go. Like, I've been looking... And I can't find it. I was trying to GPS it the other day, and it just said, location not found. <laughs> yo, yo. So, wow. So, what's your, like, message? Like My to... message overall is live your life. Do right by others. There's no need for violence, really, when you could talk it out. Especially yeah. when you're not drunk. When you're drunk, piss is going to fly. That's just the real. Yeah, in fact, it didn't matter. But just try to do right by others, live your life, and don't care about anybody else's opinions because as long as you live, you breathe, and you take steps, and you're around everybody else, everybody's going to have an opinion, my nigga. Mm-hmm. I'll, go to sto- I'll go to the store in my Pillsbury Doughboy fucking pajama pants. Why? Because I don't give a fuck about your opinions. I'm nice as fuck. You're going to hear it in my music. When I get fresh, I get fresh. Man. I don't give a fuck about being fresh all the time. What the fuck you got to be fresh all the time. What the fuck does people's opinion matter for? I'm getting aggressive, yeah, because I don't care about people's opinion. Mm -hmm. You care more about people's opinion than you do living your life. You wind up not living your life. You live to people's opinions. Mm -hmm. You live into people's opinions, man. Come on, Mm -hmm. man. I do what I want for myself and my family. You're like, Mm -hmm. come on, you ain't never put a dollar in my pocket unless I was giving you a product. And if I gave you a product and you put the money in my pocket, I don't owe you a damn thing Mm -hmm. because I already gave you the product, nigga. Mm -hmm. What you mean? I, you blaze me, I blaze you. You blaze me, you, I blaze you. You know what I mean? DMX said it the best. What these niggas want from me, nigga? Mm-hmm. What these bitches want from me? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just is what it is. Word, word. So you do, you have a family, right? Yeah, I got a family. I got um my daughter Eliana. I got um my kids Tay, um Alize. You know, I got my fiance Delilah. You know what I mean? For any of you women that think I'm attractive, I think you're attractive too. But I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? Yep, yep. It is what it is. We yep. can party, we can drink, we can have fun, but at the end of the day, I'm a responsible motherfucker, and you guys should be responsible with yourselves, too. Mm-hmm. Word, word. Um, accomplish- uh, accomplishments. Okay. Well, like, made. recently, I just started actually fucking with my manager, Jason. Shout out to my man, Jason. Mm-hmm. He doesn't really do the social media and shit like that, but shout out to him and my boyfriend, Cisco Flores. Make sure you look him up on Facebook and Twitter, too. My man, he's the one who put me, who linked me with my new manager, but he's basically providing me all the shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. I um, he heard me here. I sent I sent him kitchen. Mm-hmm. 
I was in the kitchen and it was a rap. He just put me on stage. He he linked me with his nephew, Bo Glizzy Music. Make sure y'all look up Bo Glizzy. But um, he linked me with him and we came up with something real fast. I came up with a 16, I went, no, a 12 in like 10 minutes, boom. Came up with a 12, boom. And they can vouch for me too, they'll vouch for me. Came up with a 12, 10 minutes, boom. Hit the studio, boom, spit the verse. Then next time I came back, oh, they had opened up for A Boogie. I was like, shit. I was like, they opened up for A Boogie, you ain't tell me? So I get him on the phone, like, damn, you ain't tell me you was opening up for A Boogie. And he was like, you stop calling me, you stop calling me, New York nigga. So you know he got the accent, you stop calling me, you stop calling me. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know it was like that, I didn't know what you was talking about. He said, so we gonna link you with my nephew, boom. I linked with his nephew, boom, we did a track. And so, the track came out hot. It was to the Meek Mills, um, I came out of the bitch, guys, I got this shit, it was that mm-hmm. beat. And I came out with it, um, I always been the man in the trap. Brand new Chevy truck, contraband in the back. Pretty bad bitch with her hands in my lap, counting racks, and that's facts. So I came up with a, the hook, mm-hmm. that was the hook and shit. So... After that moment, it was like really written in stone. The next event, it was, we opened up for PNB Rock. I didn't really get to do my own set, but I still got to hop on the stage, perform that hook and shit. It was still lit. I mean, we had the VIP section, but I was on deck. For any of y'all who never had the VIP section, you have got to try harder with yourselves because the VIP section is lit the fuck up. <laughs> I've never had so much Hennessy and marijuana in my life in the club. In my life. And I chilled with Cap One down south in the club with... Johns, man, and it was nothing like what I had up here. So everybody think they got to go to Atlanta to have a good time and shit, see good shows and get on. It's it's a lie, you know what I mean? Cause mm-hmm. nigga, I'm lit. We lit. Mm-hmm. I mean, just opening up for the locks right there mm-hmm. showed me what could potentially happen with my future. And it's not like I'm living for the party. I'm not living for the party because it's Cash Nate. I'm living for the money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to stay alive for the money. Mm-hmm. You tote guns, you want to pop a hundred niggas, you keep your shit to yourself. Don't chill with me because I don't want to be chilling with you and niggas mm-hmm. associate that with me, nigga. Y'all niggas want to shoot each other and kill each other, be genocidal. That's on y'all. Mm-hmm. I want to get this money, nigga. Yeah, I love yeah, I money. I've always I been a hustler, vision. nigga. Yeah. Always been a hustler. I listened to Jay-Z and Biggie growing up. I don't know who you fuck niggas listen to. I listened to Biggie. Mm-hmm. I listened to Jay-Z. I listened to Big L. That's who the hustlers was. I'm a hustler by I'm a hustler by DNA. My Uncle Shane was chopping that shit off my front porch. I grew up watching it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I grew up watching the hustle. I watched my mom hustle me a bike. I watched her sell that bike because she wanted some drugs, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I come up from a hustler generation. My grandmother whipped herself into a house. After my mom decided she didn't have, she, she couldn't take care of us, my grandmother whipped herself into a house 10 months. Mm. Whipped herself into a house. I was six years old, seven years old. My grandma whipped herself into a house. Come on now. I come from a generation where y'all don't do it like us no more. It's just mm-hmm. what it is, nigga. Like, come on, man. Wow, wow, I love your story, man. Like, I love, like, your your vision that you have. I got a big life. vision. I got a big vision for the mm-hmm. 413. If mm-hmm. niggas stop being so crabs in the, some crabs in the bucket, if niggas right. stop being crabs in the bucket and start feeding each other, everybody would be fat. Mm-hmm. Pantries wouldn't be, That's or food wouldn't be going stale. There wouldn't be meat in the freezer with freezer burn if you wasn't mm-hmm. being so selfish. Because everybody would be eating. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You wouldn't have to worry about the roaches and the rats getting to your shit because everybody's eating at the same time. You ain't got no backup. Mm-hmm. Your backup, everybody eating at the same time. Everybody is so concerned about storing and doing for themselves and just nobody makes it on their own. Mm-hmm. Nobody makes it on their own. Like, them Atlanta niggas, we are, we like, let's let's say, I'm not hating on Atlanta because Atlanta do what it's supposed to do. And when I say them Atlanta niggas, is because that's what it really is. Them Atlanta niggas know how to do it. They do it like the Mexican families do it. No, not being racist, just saying what it is. Mexican families that live 100 people in the same apartment, and then they'll add into the same pot. Then at the end of the year, everybody got their own fucking businesses. They come to America and take. They come to America and take advantage of what it is. I'm just trying to take advantage of what it is, and it's like the city that I'm born in is a consumer city. So unless somebody's telling them it's hot, they don't believe it's hot. So it's hard to come from this area. You know what I mean? It's hard to come from this area. Mm-hmm. You have to be like from a New York, from a powerhouse city, yep. where they're saying, "Yo, this is the next shit. We got to be on yep. it." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're not putting ourselves in the position to say, "Yo, this shit is hot." You know what I mean? We're we're not gaining that respect from the industry, and I feel like, and 
I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put in all the work I can. You know what I mean? There's only so much I can do for myself, and there's only so much that the people can do around me. But I'm just like I said. I'm gonna do what I can for the city. If they can help me out, then it is what it is. I, I pay back a hundred times what people give me. I will pay back a hundred times what people do for me. But people in this city don't understand that. Like they like I, like I said, they want to do for themselves, and they want to be the one that get hot. They don't they don't want to yep, they don't want to say that they supported the nigga who got hot. Mm-hmm. They want to say I'm the one who got hot. I'm about to put everybody on. Like I don't give a fuck. If my cousin got hot before me. I don't care if Richard Hyde Miss Scott I got hot before me. I don't care if Mike Gibbs get hot before me. You know what I mean? Somebody do it for the city. I like all of you nigga shit. Every mm-hmm, time you mm-hmm. post, I share. You know what I mean? Or I, if I do, if if it's not. Uh, uh, you know, relating to me per se, I don't, you know what I mean? But when I feel like I like this shit, I like this shit, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, nigga, even if your shit was whack and you come from Springfield, I'ma like your shit. I'ma share it because you're the hometown. It's the hometown. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But crabs in the bucket. You never hit the top because they grab you when you touch it. You already know. Mm, okay. Um, so, wow, that's, I like, I like everything that you said because I can agree, like, coming from, you know, like the small, small city that we're small in, city really where hard. everybody want to be the quarterback yeah, yeah, yeah. or the, the head cheerleader. So it's like, yep, you wind up fucking the same people. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't fuck somebody and you ain't even know because it's yeah. a small city where everybody's just trying to be popular. Yeah, I mean, we even get we get down to it where like even with my family, they t- start tossing out street names and shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know this nigga's street name? Why does this nigga have a street name still? You know what I mean? Yeah. He's not an entertainer or anything, but you call him by your street name. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what is niggas doing? You know, what is really niggas doing with themselves, man? It's like, they're not even focused on really getting a job and providing for themselves. They just want a name out here. Mm. They want a name. There's like a lot of artists right now, you hear it on the radio. There's They're just making songs. Everything sounds the same. Everything mm-hmm. sounds the same. We are, like, if it's trap music, it's trap music. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it, all of this auto-tune sounds the same. Like, everybody want to be Lil Uzi now. Let Lil Uzi be Lil Uzi. Come mm-hmm. up with your own style, my G. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you ain't got talent, but you sound like Lil Uzi, B. Stop trying to be Lil Uzi. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Be yourself. Everybody's original. Everybody got their own style. Stop trying to be popular just for it to say you got a name. Because, it's, mm-hmm. it, I mean, That's luckily, but message. luckily... But luckily, it makes it easier for niggas like me. When you niggas flood the game and you all sound the same, then I come with my flow and I'm coming from a city full of, you know what I mean? When I tear you up, mm-hmm. it's different. So I'm going to sell regardless. Where you niggas is just really dreaming. You niggas is really out here. It's fine. It's fine. I'm special. <laughs> my girl right here is special too. Hey. You know what I mean? <laughs> so next question. Next question. Um, I was going to ask you, like talking about Springfield artists and... Stuff like that, like, would you ever, like, collab, you know, Hell yeah, hell artists? yeah, I got two different, I got, well, of course, my cousin, the one who made me, uh, who put me in front of a mic in the first place. I got my man P. Wives on it, but I, I also offered a lot of people to get on my tape. I mean, we all have our own personal lives, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? We all have our own personal lives, so I don't never hold that against anybody. But hell yeah, I'm willing to work with anybody. I mean, I'm not charging yet. <laughs> I'm not charging. All I'm giving you is my time. I got mm-hmm. I got plenty of time to give, especially for my crap. Mm-hmm. This is something, I mean, your fans are going to become my fans. My fans are going to become your fans, especially if you burn the track. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We live in an era right now where you can't really say something's not hot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you say it's not hot, you're a hater. Mm-hmm. You're a hater. We live in social media times. So as soon as you say you're, it's not hot, you're a hater. So if I go national and I say Lil Uzi sucks on camera, you know what I mean? Everybody that's a little Uzi fan yeah. is going to say, yo, you're a fucking hater. You're mm-hmm. a hater. We're not going to like this guy because he don't like Lil Uzi. You know what I mean? And I don't just mean Lil Uzi. There's a whole bunch of... My nigga Drew uses auto-tune all the time. You know what I mean? And I don't say, like, yo, stop doing the auto-tune and shit like that. I let people do them. You know what I mean? I let people live to their comfortability. Lil Uzi hot. All my friends are dead. You know what I mean? Like, I still listen to that shit when it come on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The beat is tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can't knock real talent. But what you can knock is people trying to imitate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like I said, we live in an era where you can't call up. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you're a hater. Yep, you're a yep. hater. So like like I, like I told my friends, my dear friends and my close family, like I'm just going to keep my mom. I'm going to keep mom. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. You know what I mean? I'm Thumbs up everything. I'm going to like everything because I want I'm, I want everybody to like my shit. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? I want true. I you want, want genuine fans. Support. I want the same yeah. support. So I'm not here to shit on anybody. I mm-hmm. love everybody. 
If you can get it, I respect the hustle first and foremost. So even if your shit is trash and you get to where I want to be, I got to respect it off the rip because you are where I want to be. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's no it's no secret. I want the top. I want the glory. I want what everybody else wants out of the game. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to fake or be somebody I'm not. I ain't got no dreads. Look at I, I need a lineup right now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to bleach my hair or... Throw auto tune on my voice. I'm gonna be myself because I feel like myself is good enough to be mm-hmm. what everybody want to see. Everybody yeah. want to see somebody who not fabricated. Yep. I see fabricated motherfuckers all the time that don't make it. So mm-hmm. what do I learn from? What have I learned from that? Not to be fabricated. Mm-hmm. Be you yourself. know, be myself. Yeah. And they're gonna love. Like I said, they gonna paparazzi gonna take a hundred pictures when I go to the store mm-hmm. in my holy fucking pajama pants. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at this guy, millions of dollars, mm-hmm. still wearing some old ass pajama pants. Why? Because I don't give a fuck about opinions. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be myself. Mm-hmm. And my favorite pair of my favorite pair of um shoes, believe it or not, is some Jordan Sandals I have for like seven years. Why? Because they're comfortable to me now. I broke them in. Like, you know what I mean? I I come from being broke. What am I gonna front for niggas for? Mm-hmm. I come from being broke, nigga. Hand me down shirts, hand me down shoes, hand me down jeans. I ain't gonna lie, nigga. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie, times is tough, times is still tough. I'm cash nigga because I'm trying to make it, baby. This is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm nice as fuck with the music. It's just, I got to get it some way. I ain't go to college. I'm not a professor. It's, I'm not a lawyer or a doctor. You know what I mean? Have just, the I have that talent. I, have, I can hear a beat and I can dissect what I'm supposed to see on the beat. And I, I feel a beat. There's nice where I just spent alone crying because I didn't know when I was going to see my mom again. So we was just listening to songs, and one of my favorite songs to this day is "Can You Stand the Rain," I love and that song. it's it's "Can You Stand the Rain?" Like, are you gonna be okay? Are you gonna be okay when everything is said and done? And I really got the message, like when I was just laying on the floor, just thinking one time about my life, and I was like 11, 12, just listening to the song, crying, thinking because I've been out without my mom for like four or five years at the time, seeing her like once in the blue. And it was just like, it just came to me one day, I just started writing music, started writing music. Never heard any of those songs recorded. I was a little kid. And my cousin put me in front of the mic, you know what I mean? So I've always felt the music. The music is always the number one. It's a part of your life. It's a part of my life. The music is number one. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody's so obsessed with branding and shit. Well, my brand is the music. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, if you do catch me, like, like, uh, Cam caught Jay-Z out in the slippers and shit, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. made a big spat about it, you can expect that from me. I'm not here to impress you guys. I'm here to make you shake your ass like my music. <laughs> I'm not here to, like, win any fashion contest. Like, that shit is for niggas who are insecure about themselves. Mm-hmm. I'm not insecure about myself. Do I like looking fresh? Yeah. Is these wood flames with my name in them? Yes, they is. Because I do like getting, I do like getting fly and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But it's not my main concern. My main concern is getting money and being secure. Getting fresh comes later. There's a lot of niggas who got on the freshest pair of J's. They walk into the bus stop. We we discussed. We I mean I'm pretty sure you had that conversation with plenty of people. They putting on J's and they calling them. They shorty for a ride and shit. They using their girl ride to get around town. Now me, I'm riding around in my Benzie. I'm scooping niggas up. You feel me? Like I'm selling my mixtapes. You see it on my social media. Like, people got it fucked up, man. Just put the music first. Put the music first. Put the yep. fashion later. You know yep, what I mean? Because yep. you're going to be here. You're going to be here today and gone tomorrow mm-hmm. if you don't, exactly. if you're not putting the music first. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're if good with some quick fame, then be good with some quick fame. I want longevity. Yeah. That's the key word. Longevity. Long-term success. Yeah. I feel you want. on that. Talking about, like, you know, branding mm-hmm. and all of that, like, have you ever thought about, you know, like wanting to get signed, you know, by like record labels? How do you feel about like working with record labels and That's like- a real touchy subject, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I say it in my music, labels wanna sign us something now to rape us. You know what I mean? They wanna I mean, I right now, you the product you have in your hand, mm-hmm. I pick the beats, mm-hmm. I wrote the lyrics, I sat back, I edited the lyrics and I put out the product that I wanted to put out. Now, mm-hmm. say if I sign to a label, I can't do that. It's going to be 10, 20 people the music has to go through, then it goes to a listening for a listening platform, mm-hmm. and they say, da 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 nah, we got we to gotta redo this, we want you to say this, we want you to do that mm-hmm. to it. And it's like, but you, I'm not giving the people me, I'm giving the people y'all, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. So it just really depends on what comes from the deal. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If they want me to be fabricated, that's something I probably wouldn't sign because mm-hmm. it, good music takes a while. It doesn't. It's not like I can hit the studio and just say the hundred things over and over. Like there's a lot of rap, um, rappers who do that shit, mm-hmm. and I'm not knocking them. They just, but they're just doing it just to stay relevant, yeah, just to yeah. stay in people's head. Like, mm-hmm. just I don't do that. Like. You're going to get some hot, catchy shit from me regardless. But it's, I'm not going to just hit the studio and repeat myself just till it mm-hmm. sticks in your head. Mm-hmm. That's just not what I do, man. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the art, and I'm a man of the craft. Mm-hmm. So you're going, to get, you're going to get the best music I can give to you. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't feel like the label would allow me, unless I get like a Kendrick Lamar deal. Because Kendrick Lamar yeah, puts out yeah. the music he wants to put out. You know what I mean? Like, that nigga's nice. Mm-hmm. That nigga's nice. Him, J. Cole, them niggas is nice. Those are the niggas I look up to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially right now. But like I said, as, um, as far as it does, it's a touchy subject. Mm-hmm. If I'm able to do what I want to do with it, and yeah, you know what I mean? Because I'm going to get it right regardless. I have I have lottery dreams and I have failure nightmares. So I don't even get good sleep. I'm up every two hours feeling like I need to go get a mixtape off. So... Mm-hmm. Wow.